Ah, are we going? We're good. We're good. We are good. What's happening, guys? Dave, the film junkie here. Welcome to episode three. Three. Woo! Look at that. Keeping up, kinda. I am recording this on Monday night, not Sunday night, like I was trying to do. You know what? And and pardon if I sound a little. <laughs> trying to fight some kind of weird alien virus that's trying to attack my body. I've been fighting it all weekend. If you guys notice, I didn't do like any videos really on Friday or Saturday because I got home from work and I just kind of just died a little bit. Just kind of put on, uh, I put on Fences. It uh, wasn't the last movie I watched. Well, yeah, it was the last Academy Award winning movie I watched. I didn't get to watch Lion, so I didn't watch all the Best Picture nominees. But I put on fences and just kind of zoned out, a little drink, drink, you know, you know how it is, and then just uh, passed out. And then Saturday, just my energy levels were going up and down. And I woke up early, you know, that, that you know, when you just wake up at like seven, in the seven o'clock hour on a Saturday, you're like, there's no fucking cartoons to watch. What's going on? Do you ever used to do that? I used to do that all the time, man. I wake up at like 7, 7.30 to watch Saturday morning cartoons. You know, I almost called this podcast because I was going to start doing I was going to do it on Saturday morning. See how I change things? See how see the segues here? The segues here? Ah, yeah, that's what I do. I just go off on, you know, whatever I'm talking about. No, I was actually going to call this as like the Saturday morning car, uh, podcast or I was going to call it Saturday morning cartoons or something like that. I was really running with that title for the longest time. But I was like, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. You know, if podcast rhymed with cartoons somehow, I, that's what I was trying to figure out. How can I make it sound like it rhymes with cartoons? Yeah, it just didn't work. It didn't work. So I, anyways, I apologize if I sound, if I do a little, you know, one of those things. Isn't that sexy? Yeah, ladies. Yeah, there's no ladies listening to this. Are you kidding me? Guys, um, so I, I apologize for that. But yeah, Saturday, I was just like, whew, I was up and down just. I took like two naps and I was trying to get, I was thinking about getting videos done, but there wasn't really much that was happening, but stuff happened later. And then, uh, and then a bunch of friends were like, Hey, let's, let's go get some dinner and this, that, and this. So I hung out with a, uh, some friends for a few hours and then I came home and just died again. So, and then yesterday I just started freaking just pounding them out, pounding them out. And I'm still catching up. I, I mean, I, I posted a video about guardians of the galaxy, like, that I've recorded yesterday. And uh, yeah. So anyways guys. That's besides the point. How are you? You good? Good. You ready to listen to me ramble on. For who knows how long. Well, how about those Academy Awards. Holy. Shiza. Um, apparently. Uh, the ratings were shit. <laughs> well you know what. I mean. I think people were fearing. People were really fearing that. You know. It's just going to get all political. Um. And it depends on where, where, what side you stand on, I guess, uh, for the political. Because if it was, uh, if it was uh, promoting Trump, you were okay with it. But you don't really see that in liberal Hollywood. That, you know, that's what it is. You don't see opposing. You always see one side of it. Because, you know, Hollywood's liberal. That's just the way it is. That's fine. But there wasn't actually, it wasn't that bad. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel did his thing. And I thought he did a really good job hosting. I mean, he, he took some stabs at Trump. And I liked actually when he uh, he tweeted him. And he actually tweeted him. It was pretty funny. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I thought he actually did a really good job. And that whole, like, tourist bus thing. When those people just, like, walked in. And all of a sudden, they were just like, hey, there's Ryan Gosling. There's Denzel Washington. Nicole Kidman. What the fuck? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine walking in with that? That's crazy. So that was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go over some of the winners here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll save the uh, the best picture stuff for uh, the last part. We'll just talk about the big stuff. You know, who cares about best documentary? <laughs> who the fuck watches that? Now we should watch all that. Foreign language film? Who watches that? So I'm, I'm actually wondering how many people actually saw the best picture winner. I fucking... Okay, this is this is a gripe, okay? Oh, God. Hold on a sec. I gotta... Uh, I have my TV on mute, and Two Broke Girls just turned on, and I can't fucking stand this show, so I gotta change the channel real quick. And Practical Jokers, True TV, can't go wrong. Anyways. Um, oh, I love Impractical Jokers. Those guys are amazing. Um, so, what was I talking about? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... You know, I have friends. 
and I'm not trying to talk shit, but it's just it's just being being who I am, the film junkie, and loving movies and everything. I'm like, I even tweeted this out. I'm like, there's a lot of people that I know that are looking forward to the Academy Awards who haven't fucking seen most of the movies nominated. Come on, people. I don't watch the Grammys because I don't know I don't know 95% of the music that's playing. The only thing I was looking forward to with the Grammys was Metallica because I love Metallica. And I was looking forward to Metallica. That was pretty much it. Otherwise, I could give a fucking rat's shit about the Grammys, but the Academy Awards, of course, and I always make it, I always make it my due diligence to watch all the, at least all the best pictures, there's some of the other ones I didn't watch, which I, I fucking hate myself for, and I didn't watch Lion, that was the only one I didn't get to, because it wasn't in my little inbox thing that I had, so I feel, I feel like I, uh, I'm neglecting some things here, and I feel sad, anyways, but it's just kind of funny, like, yeah, Academy Awards, it's, you know, and like, how many of the movies have you seen? Oh, I, I think I saw one of them. What the fuck? And it was funny, too, because I, I ended up going to my mom's house and watching with her. And she was so happy that Casey Affleck won. And she hadn't even seen the fucking movie. <laughs> I was like, you haven't even seen Manchester by the Bay. Why do you want him to win so bad? You haven't seen it. I was rooting for Denzel. Not going to lie. I thought he did a little bit better in Fences than, than Affleck. But, I mean, Affleck did an amazing job, too. And I'm happy for him. And did you see fucking Ben? Oh, Oh, I wanted to give him a big hug and touch chins with him. Um, yeah, because he was just, he was holding back those tears and he was happy for his brother, man. So both Affleck brothers are like the fucking Manning brothers now, man. They got some fucking trophies. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> which one's, <laughs> which one's Eli? I guess Affleck's, or I guess Casey's <laughs> is Eli. My name's Eli. I make weird faces when the camera's on me. Um. No, but yeah, that was that was touching to see like Ben just like, you know, just choked up and everything. That was pretty awesome. Anyways, anyways, guys, um, let's talk about these winners here, even though I just talked about one of them. Let's start with directing. And this was my choice. And I thought it was well deserved, man. Uh, Damien Chazelle. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of people were rooting for Jenkins and uh, even Gibson for uh this one right here i mean i'm not gonna lie i mean all the movies nominated did 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 great you know they were what's great about the academy awards you have like different kinds of movies and it's just it's just, to me it's just all about how this director really brought their vision to life and damien chazelle motherfucker i don't know how first off he directed he wrote and directed whiplash which is like one of my top 10 favorite fucking movies that movie is just simply amazing. And when I found out that, I mean, I heard about La La Land, and then when I found out, I was like, oh, wait, that, that is from the director, writer-director of Whiplash. Holy shit, I do got to see that. And, uh, you know, I was a little worried about the whole musical aspect of it because, you know, I'm not big on musicals. Which, you know, and, 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 and you macho fucking assholes out there, you know, I, and, uh, I, I, I get it, okay? We're men. We're men. Yeah, we got fucking hair on our chest. We have hair on our knuckles. Hair in our taints. Hair in our buttholes. I'm getting really explicit with this podcast. Um, but fucking A. Whatever. Watch La La Land, okay? <laughs> Get Put your fucking macho-ness aside. Because every time I've told, like, hey, have you seen La La Land to, like, a dude? Oh, fuck no, man. I'm fucking musical. Fuck you. Shut the fuck up, okay? I remember one, one of my friends, I was like, and he was like, yeah, I was not interested. I'm all, you like jazz? Hell yeah, I like jazz. Then you're going to love La La Land. Dickhead, watch it. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I was going to be okay with the musical stuff too. And at first I was like, eh. But then the way Damien Giselle shot it and just engrossed you into this world, it made sense. And in my little review, I even said that. I, I compared it to uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world because it was like, that movie made me believe in a world that was like, that had like video game, uh, video game like uh, I guess guidelines, rules. This one, I believe that these people would just randomly just start dancing, start dancing and singing. Yeah, yeah, I was okay with it, and the movie was phenomenal. I mean, I mean, oh, overall, my favorite movie of the best picks noms were uh, was Arrival, just because that was such a such a an original and unique alien invasion movie. And I love alien invasion movies. But, of course, I knew that was going to win shit, even though cinematography should have fucking, I don't know. 
But La La Land won cinematography, and that had really good cinematography too. So that was kind of a weird one. But I think La La Land's like my second. I'm not going to lie. I've watched it twice. Actually, one and a half. I don't think I fully watched the second time. Anyways, so Damien Chazelle. This is just, he's just a talent, dude. I can't wait to see what he does next. I don't know what the fuck he's going to do next, but I'm, I'm going to be there. Because, and I think it's dessert. Like, I was like, yes, he has to because just what he did with that movie, I, I, it's just, he achieved the impossible. He made a fucking macho asshole like me like love a musical. So watch it, okay? Watch it while you're eating some fucking red meat and punching something. I don't know, guys. Not not your woman. Don't, don't do Where am I going with this, Dave? I don't know. But <laughs> that sounded bad. I retract that. But I just heard punching. I'm like, well, obviously you're going to be watching with your girl. It's a good movie to watch with a girl. I guarantee you're going to like it. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, yeah, directing Damien Chazelle. That was my choice. It definitely should have. I mean, as well, as much as Mel Gibson gave me goddamn anxiety with those war scenes. Oh, it's just the fact that he did uh, Damien Chazelle. I couldn't believe he, how he did that. Uh, best supporting actress, Viola Davis. That was my choice. Totally deserved. Man, Amanda Waller has a fucking... Academy Award. And so does the Joker. Anybody else? Uh, ah, Will Smith was nominated. Eh, look at that. Suicide Squad. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about that later, too. Um, yeah, I thought it was well deserved. I mean, like, Fences was, you know, there wasn't anything, like, too crazy with the story, but these, I mean, Denzel and her were just two fucking powerhouses in that movie. I tell you what. I mean, jeez. Uh, now moving on to Best Supporting Actor, and I do not support this. Oh, what are you saying, Dave? What's going on? Racist? No. Okay, hear me out here. Now, as much as Mahershala Ali did a good job, he did a great job in Moonlight. The reason why I don't think he should have won is because that movie is divided up in three chapters of this character's life, the kid. You got the kid when he's really young. And then he was in, when he's a teenager, and then when he's grown up. Ali was only in the first chapter of the movie. He probably had about 15, maybe 20 minutes of screen time. He wasn't in the full movie. And I even said this too. I mean, I, uh, I mean the other, uh, like Dev Patel, I didn't see Lion, but his little Academy Award winning clip was better than anything that Ali did in Moonlight. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's my opinion. I'm not saying that he did a terrible job. I just don't think he did the best. And I didn't see Nocturnal Animals, animals yet, which I suck because I love Michael Shannon. And he he's totally he, he deserves an Oscar, 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 because he's just a great actor. But when I was watching the clips, I was like, yeah, Dev, Dave, Dev Patel's clip was better than anything that Ali did the entire time he was in Moonlight. And like I said, 15 minutes of screen time, probably. And that, to me, that's just like, that's not enough. You know, Jeff Bridges was in the entire movie. I think Dev Patel was in most of the movie. Lucas Hedges was in the, in, almost pretty much in the entire movie. Michael Shannon, I'm sure he was. I didn't see it, but you know, it's just, to me, that just didn't seem right. I don't know. To me. Ah, whatever though. Congratulations, Miss Riley. Uh, actress in a leading role. Yep. Yeah, you knew it was going to go to Emma Stone. I think she's going to be, honestly... <laughs> Don't tell anybody this, guys. I'm going to whisper it to you. She's the new Jennifer Lawrence. What? Did I just say that? Yeah, she's going to be the new uh, America's sweetheart. But Because let's face facts. Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think, I, I mean, as much as I like her, I think after a while I just kind of got, eh. And I've always, always been a fan of uh, emma stone since fucking super bad man i i fell in love with her then and when i watched la la land it reminded me of oh yeah i love this woman i'm sorry jesus oh adorable awesome and sadly i didn't see any of the other movies that anybody i was just so glad meryl streep didn't win i'm sorry nothing against meryl streep okay I mean, I know she went up there. I mean, she already she did get her little two cents in about the whole Trump thing. Yeah, we got that. But it's just like, you know what? Meryl Streep wins. She don't need to win again. Give, give it to somebody else. I mean, I'm sure she did a good job in that movie, but whatever. 
But I didn't see any of the other movies. Jackie, Loving, and Ellie. I didn't see any of those. Ha! Huh. Yeah, I didn't see those. Sorry. Yeah, I suck. I guess I'm just... I'm, I'm a misogynist! Anyway, so we go to uh, actor in a leading role, Casey Affleck. I did not think... I mean, I did. He was my second choice. But I really thought Denzel... I mean, I said this in my uh, in my review for Fences, too. I was like, I felt sorry for the guy who had to pick the clip because there were so many monologues that Denzel had in the movie. I couldn't believe it. I was like, Jesus. It's just like nonstop. I'm like, how do you pick a clip to show during these awards? Yeah, Denzel's okay. He won the SAG Award. That's fine. Casey won it, too, but a lot of people were pissed about it because apparently sexual assaults seven years ago when he did that... Uh, that, that crazy Joaquin Phoenix movie. Did you guys see that? That movie, I'm still puzzled by that little documentary to this day. Either Joaquin Phoenix is the best actor ever, or he really did lose his mind. It's hard telling. I got a friend of mine who thinks that it was real. And I just don't know. And I know Casey Affleck directed it, and apparently he, like, sexually assaulted two women or one woman or something like that i don't know and then they settled out of court and blah blah blah. so a lot of people are still pissed off about that it's like has he done anything since in the last seven years has he done anything no leave him the fuck alone who cares okay he didn't rape anybody who wasn't accused of rape okay he probably just said something out of key and jesus christ if that was really happening joaquin phoenix was losing his goddamn mind and, and sniffing coke off hookers buttholes or something i don't know he was doing something so there's a lot of weird crazy shit going on with that documentary so that's why i'm like no don't even you know i wasn't accused of rape if he said something yeah whatever i don't know but i thought washington was gonna win i didn't see captain fantastic which yeah i suck again ryan gosling he was totally at the bottom of this because i mean ryan gosling He's got a charm. He's great. And I loved him in The Nice Guys. One of my favorite movies. That was my favorite movie last year. He's a, but he's, he doesn't really have a lot of range. But for some reason, like, he's just so likable. But I didn't think he, like, I mean, as much as that was him playing piano, and I was mesmerized by him playing piano, and, of course, doing the dancing and stuff. Not the best singer, but whatever. Uh, I just didn't think, like, no. I mean, when it came to Affleck or or Denzel, I was like, it's got to be one of them. And I thought Denzel was going to do it, but, hey, good job, Casey. And then, oh, Ben crying. Anyways, um, and then we got that best picture. Where's the one, baby? <laughs> fucking poor guy but steve harvey was like oh shit thank you um by the way i'm not sipping a beer tonight no rolling rock i'm sipping on some uh captain morgan ah, that's right guys hey, you know what i've noticed when i when i'm you know fighting something it does help it's like medicine it's like cough medicine or something but uh <laughs> jesus christ okay i was a little pissed off about this like a, and, and this is, again, nothing against Moonlight. It was a good movie. It was totally, like, original. I've never seen, like like I said, I mean, if you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sure you've already heard the premise. You know, it, it eventually, you know, you, you the, the kid is struggling with his sexuality. You don't see that in, like, I guess, you, you know, quote-unquote street movies. Not really, a, it's not a gangster movie. It's not a gangster movie at all. It's a street movie, you know. It's showing the black, you know, somebody in the black community goes a crackhead mom, no dad. Uh, who's struggling with his sexuality? But uh, it was—I I cannot believe what the fuck happened. How do how do you fuck that up? I don't know how do you fuck that up. It's not Warren Beatty's fault. It's not even really Faye Dunaway's fault. It's neither their fault. They gave him the best actress envelope. Emma Stone says she had the envelope with her. Apparently, they have two of them. It's a—it's—it's it's just a little weird to me. How do you fuck that up? Especially when it's the biggest award of the night. Somebody better have got their ass fired. First off. I mean, I don't know if they actually fire people. I mean, she's just like once a year. I don't know. Oh, shit. You fired me? Shit. What am I going to do for 300 for one day out of the year? 364? I don't know. But that I was pissed off because I thought La La Land actually deserved it. Out of all these... Okay, let's go down the list here. Arrival. That was my favorite of of these uh, nominated movies because it was just f- a phenomenal movie. Fences was great, was absolutely great, but it was more performance-based. 
You know, so I was like, no, nah, not best picture. Hacksaw Ridge, who close because those, I mean, like I said, great performances, great, uh, great story, but the, it, those war scenes just, I like I said, I was, I, I almost started pacing because they were fucking giving me anxiety. Hell or High Water, that's a movie I could watch over and over again. It's just one of those, one of those kind of movies where you just watch. Ben Foster was a beast, totally snubbed for an Oscar. Hidden Figures, overrated, a little bit overrated, slightly. It was good, but. I didn't think it was like anything like too. It was just it was a good biopic. Uh, La La Land. All right, let's go to the other ones. Lion didn't see it. Manchester by the Sea. Uh, really liked it, but it was just you know, again, it wasn't anything like too extravagant. But what I liked about it was how awkward some of those scenes would get, in the way that they did the flashbacks and everything. And then of course the performances were great. Uh, Moonlight was just it was okay. Compare Moonlight to La La Land. Moonlight, I, I read, was shot in 25 days. You know? I mean, I'm not saying the movie was easy to shoot, but a hell of a lot easier to shoot than La La Land. Some of the scenes in La La Land took two days to shoot. One sequence. That opening sequence that was fucking amazing on an overpass on a freeway. They shot in two days. And then even some of the other scenes, like the the scene where they had the... Apparently, that was a real backdrop, too, when uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone were first doing their thing. I thought it was CGI, but apparently they actually shot it during like that time, that magical time in L.A. or in California where you could see that beautiful sunset on a clear night. They shot it in two days, eight takes. That's fucking difficult, okay? And that's what I'm saying. I'm just like going... When it comes to the caliber of of how these actors had to perform in both movies and how these directors had to perform. I mean, obviously, it's all subjective. I get it, guys. But I'm just looking at what it took to make both movies. La La Land, it took a little bit. It took a lot more effort. I'm sorry. I, Moonlight was really good. And it totally, like, when, when I, because I, I went into the movie not even knowing what the fuck the movie was about. I just knew it was like, okay, this kid, you see, like, chapters of his life. But I didn't realize it was, like, a street movie that the kid, you know, the kid who, growing up, he struggles with his sexuality. But, you know what? It was, you know, part of it was kind of boring. I'm not going to lie. La La Land wasn't bored. That's just to me. And it just seemed a little fishy to me. I don't know. Conspiracy theorists. You do your thing. I'm not going to. I just, to me, it was just like, I don't think it, I don't think it really deserved it. I think it was up there. I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I enjoyed the movie. I liked the movie. It was very like, like the story was really original, but La La Land, Damien Chazelle and all those, and the actors and everybody just did something really special. How do you, how the fuck do you make a musical in the old style that used to be in like the fifties and forties and whatever? How do you bring that to 2017? That's an impossible feat. I don't know. That's just me, though. And that's that's uh, that's uh, my, that's my thing on the Oscars right there, guys. And uh, I, may, I actually meant to start the podcast off um, talking about uh, a certain actor that passed away the day of. Jesus Christ. Ah, that was a rough one. That was That one stung a little bit. Especially when you wake up, you're not feeling too good. You know, you're up and down, and I actually woke up thinking I had to work on a Sunday, freaking out. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! It was like, I think it was like 8 o'clock in the morning, and then I just was like, ah, jeez. And then I was like, of course, I was a little bit awake, so I just, you know, went to the couch, grabbed my phone, and I see Bill Paxton fucking died. What the fuck? Is 2016 still around? Jesus. 61 years old, young as shit, man. He had a lot. He had a lot left in him. And yeah, this one stung, man, because I grew up with it. I grew up watching this guy. I grew up watch. All of us did. You know, and I even said this too. I mean, he Bill Paxton was one of those actors that if the movie sucked, you loved him. You know, you know. There's like there's few actors. And actresses that are like that, where it's like they're like they play a lot of more character roles, never really like the leading man or leading woman. You know, they're not really that, but they show up in movies. They're like a supporting role, and the movie could suck, but you like them. And Bill Paxton was that guy. The thing is, though, there was a lot of goddamn movies 
that were good that he was in. Weird science. Aliens. Aliens. That was when I first got introduced to Bill Paxton. And, and, you know, when people ask me, like, what's your favorite? I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, I could name off, you know, weird science. Tombstone. Twister. Simple. Ah, jeez. It's so, ah. It's terror. It's, ah. It's crazy, man. Game over, man. Game over. He improvised that line, by the way. That was all him. He put her in charge. God, he was awesome. Fucking Hudson, dude. Jesus. Loved him. Me and my brother. We'd watch that movie and then we'd pretend like... And we'd play Aliens. And we'd... We'd want to either be Hicks or Hudson. And I always wanted to be Hudson because we just loved all the lines that he had. He was just fucking great in that movie. I mean, yeah, and then, of course, everybody knows that he is the only actor that was killed by a Predator, a Terminator, and an alien. Crazy. Who the fuck? I mean, how? Did, how that, that just shows you that how, how loved you are. The fact that you got these, like, iconic sci-fi characters, these, you know, a Predator, alien, and Terminator, and Bill Paxton was killed by each one of them. I mean, James Cameron obviously loved the guy. You know, and he just so happened to get a role in Predator 2, which he was, he was a douche, but he was so likable. Just like in True Lies, a douche, but likable. Always likable. And, you know, you, you think about it, it's like, oh man, he was in that movie Frailty 2, which was really, really good. God, talk about an ending. Ah, it's terrible, man. I just, ah, so much life. To, and then Tombstone tombstone i mean that cast each one of them had a job to do and they all fucking nailed it and bill paxton was one of them when he fucking dies good lord that 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 scene is very hard to watch sometimes when you think when i've watched it it's hard to watch he gets shot in the back and they're trying to dig the bullet out of his back and that's oh oh and then when he's like talking to Wyatt and he's just like talking about, you know, how, you know, you're supposed to see a light. And he's like, I don't see a goddamn thing. Oh, and then he dies. It's, oh, God. Ah. Oh, getting fucking choked up just, to, just talking about it right now, man. Ah. Yeah, it's sad, man. I, I, who would have thought? Who would have thought? In surgery. I don't even know what the surgery was about. I didn't even look, look that up. That was released or anything. But, God. And he just like shot, he shot like a complete first season of the Training Day uh, TV series. Um, who knows what they're going to do with that. Yeah, man. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a difficult one. That's a difficult, that's a childhood actor, you know. When you watch like a lot of those movies, man. That's, that's a hard one to watch. That's a, that was a hard one. I, I got choked up on that one. You know, I mean, when, you know, actors die all the time. I mean, obviously with Carrie Fisher, too, I, I got choked up with that. Because it's always when you grow up. When you grow up with a certain actor, Robin Williams was a really difficult one. That one, I actually cried with that one. Uh, it's just, it. that's what makes it, like, really difficult, you know. You know, sometimes, you know, and when you know, an actor dies, I'm just like, you know, oh, okay, yeah, I, I like that. But I don't get, like, that emotionally invested you know but when it when it certain ones you know robin williams carrie fisher bill paxton for sure that yeah, lump in the throat or actual tears came about yeah it's that's difficult man really difficult i can't believe it man 61 years old that's that that's that sucks that really sucks i mean he was still kicking ass too i mean edge of tomorrow jesus christ he was awesome in edge of tomorrow <sighs> And, you know, it's funny, too, because Conan O'Brien, I just watched tonight, he, he told a really great story uh, about Bill Paxton, which was just like, and you always love it, too, when you hear, like, actors just say, like, you know what, I loved working with the guy. He was just a naturally, just a fucking awesome dude. And that's what they said about Bill Paxton. I just, I, yeah, it's that's nuts, man. Freaking nuts. Anyways, uh, let's move it along here. What's, uh, what, what's going on? But, you know, I... I feel sorry for his uh, family. I mean, he's he gone too soon. He will be missed. Uh, just one of my favorite actors, man. I, I can't believe it. I just really can't. 
Man, I, uh, anyways, yeah. Take a little sip. Cheers, right here, holding up my drink to Bill Paxton, guys. If you're if you have a drink, if you're listening to me, and you have a drink, hold it up right now. All right, clink to Bill Paxton. There you go. All right. Anyways, what's going on? What's happened in the past week that uh, I could talk about again that I haven't talked about? Well, hey. Well, yeah. I mean, I posted that video about David Ayer and making fun of uh, the websites out there. I, I don't know what's been going on. I mean, I think I've been like keeping my mouth shut. Especially, I don't, I don't, I don't like to call out people. I don't want to, I don't want to create enemies, guys. I really don't. I really don't. I would love to be the mu- the movie community to be all like one and be okay. But sadly, there's just there's fucking. Uh, there's guys that I just want to just, hey, you know what? Like, I just want to say, fuck you and suck on my chode. I, I seriously, because I, I just don't understand it. Like, yeah, uh, I mean the whole, when I posted the, the Ben Affleck video, I mean, I mean, I, I even got really, when I watched that video, I rewatched it. I'm like, wow, I got really intense. Holy shit. <laughs> because, you know, overall it's like, who cares? This is just movies. It's all make believe. Why do we care so much? I mean, I get it. I get it. I mean, we love movies, and then we love these comic book characters that have been in our lives since we could comprehend anything. You know, I can't remember when I didn't love Batman. You know, and I even saw some comments too where people were like, "Jesus Christ, why do you care so much?" or something like that. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I mean, you look at that video. I got way more positivity. I'm, I'm one of those people that look at the. Uh, the bigger numbers, not the small numbers. You know, some of these people go like, oh my God, I'm being harassed. I'm like, yeah, by 5% of your followers, grow a pair, shut the fuck up, and embrace the people that are giving you positivity. Why are we so negative? We're always so negative. We always focus on the small numbers. Focus on the big, you fucking assholes. Seriously, like, I mean, I was, that pissed me off about the whole Leslie Jones thing. I even tweeted, I think I even tweeted her when she was being harassed. I'm all... Because I was looking at all her tweets. I was like, and there was a shit ton of positivity. And I and I, I literally tweeted, I was all, look at all the positive. I think I did. Or at least maybe I imagined it. I don't know. Uh, but I, I think I tweeted. I was like, look at all the positive. Okay? Just focus on that. Who cares about the assholes who are trolling you? Fuck them. There, that's only about, probably about 10% of who is tweeting you right now. 10, 15. You know, who cares? These other people are just pieces of shit. Uh, for some reason, though, everybody wants to focus on the fucking small numbers. Everything. Always the small numbers. Let's work from big to small. Please? Can we do that? Anyways, but, uh, yeah, so I did that Ben Affleck video because it just came to me when I was driving home from work one day. I was like, wait a minute, that Matt Damon video when he talks about how his kid uh, thinks he's Batman in the FedEx thing. I'm all, there's no way. Like, if, if your kids are so excited that you're fucking Batman... There's no way you're going to walk away from that. Even though you're not going to care about what John Campia thinks or what John Schnepp thinks or whatever the fuck or Jeremy Johns. Who knows? All the Collider guys. You're not going to fucking care what they think. You're not going to fucking care. These are just guys behind keyboards or behind microphones, you know, who would totally kiss your ass if you walked into the room. Nobody cares. That's why it was like, yeah. There's no way. Why would why would why would Affleck care when his fucking son is all about him being Batman? A love of, a love of a child, uh, your own child, is way more, way more of a thing than some fucking asshole behind a goddamn keyboard like me. I even said that. I even said me. I was like, who? He doesn't care what I think, even though we have good chins. We have dimple chins. That's right, motherfuckers. So, but uh. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, very positive about that video. It's it's still making the rounds. I still get comments about it every day. A lot of positivity, you know, so that's good. But uh, I was making fun of um, websites today because it, when David Ayer... <coughs> oh, got to take some more of my cough medicine. Hold on, guys. David Ayer posted uh, the Black Mask image and... Then all of a sudden, like right after, I'm seeing like websites doing the whole question headline, which I, I'm not a fan of the question headline. I've done it many times. 
and I'm really not a fan about it. So I'm not. I'm not. And unless I'm doing like an opinion video, because I did one last night about Army Hammer and I did like a question thing. I'm not like a huge fan of it, but if I'm doing like something where I'm like more doing like an opinion piece, then I'm okay with it. But if it's actual news, I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> The guy is directing Gotham City Sirens. Obviously, he's in post-production for his movie Bright because we saw the little TV spot yesterday, which it looks fucking awesome, by the way. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, and I will do a review and everything. Um, so now he's starting to prep Gotham City Sirens. And he decided, hey, I'm going to give everybody a little fucking bone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet out the picture, this image right here, and that's it. And I love that shit. I love it when these directors do that. They don't they don't just have to say it. They just put it out there. But it's just so funny because you got these writers going like, Did David Aaron just taste? Did he just taste fucking black mask but I got the taste? What the fuck? Don't do that. Especially when everybody else follows along in your footsteps. It's like, no, he did not tease. He just fucking told us that Black Mask is the villain in Gotham City Sirens. I'm sorry. And that's, and that's what I titled my video. I said, Black Mask is the villain in David Ayer's Gotham City Sirens. I was like, that's the headline right there, guys. And I'm not trying to stroke my ego, maybe a little bit. Fucking whatever. Um, no, but I'm just like, it's just, you know what? You know what website really does that a lot is MovieWeb. I, I mean, I don't, I look at MovieWeb that, but Jesus Christ, they, if you look at a lot of their posts, they do that the question headline all like a majority of the time. I, I shit you not. Go look, and you'll see question marks all over their shit. I swear, and it's just after a while it just gets annoying. Just don't do that, please. Don't do that. We don't need to do that. What else happened this week? Well, the Nightwing movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess yeah that happened all after. Uh, after I did the last podcast. And of course Matt Reeves officially directing and producing the Batman movie. See I mean this is another thing too that pisses me off about these big movie guys. Who are just like oh my god yeah, you walked away. The DCO. Yeah man they gotta stop sucking. Just fucking get back into uh go lock yourself in a room and stop sucking. You know these are guys that I respect. And they just start acting like assholes. Like they, as if they know how to make a movie. Or what they... I mean, we all think we know what they should do and what they should put and everything like that. And, you know, what should be in the movie. Yes. Even I've done. I've done videos where I'm like, well, they should have did this in Batman or Superman. Or they should have did this in Suicide Squad. But, uh, you know, when it comes to, like, how a movie's being made and negotiations, these guys make it sound like they know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's like, oh, Matt Reeves, he just exited the fucking negotiations. Oh, yeah, the Batman, they're screwed. They're screwed. They lost their second director. And I was like, no, they did not. They were in negotiations, and apparently he walked away. And then all of a sudden, bam, Matt Reeves goes, oh, yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, he just put up his middle finger and said, yeah, what the hell do you guys think? What do you know? You don't know shit. You know, and then it, and it's there's so much focus on the DCEU when the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, went through a bunch of shit, too. Like, they, they went through director changes. They've had the studio intervene and fuck up some shit. But it doesn't get recognized. It's a weird bias. I don't. I don't quite understand it. I mean, I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I think. I mean, I think. Well, a good majority of it is because you know. I mean, nothing against Marvel characters, but let's face it: Batman and Superman are bigger than anything that Marvel's produced. I'm. I'm. That. That's just truth. You'll see more Superman shirts than Captain America shirts. You'll see more fucking Batman shirts than you'll see Iron Man shirts. Out there. They're more iconic. They've been around. So it's just, I think that's why people look at the DCEU so, they just put it under a goddamn microscope and they can't accept anything that comes out of it, it seems. You know? And I don't know how, I mean, hopefully Wonder Woman will be just, you know, knock everybody out. I don't see it being, I don't see it getting shit on by critics for sure. I th I, it's going to make a shit ton. It's going to be successful no matter what. But I don't see it getting shit on uh, by critics. I just don't. And hopefully Justice League really blows our minds, which it looks like it's going to. I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's just like these guys just need to relax, though, sometimes. It's a little too much. 
little too much. What the hell? Oh, there it goes. Sorry. I was scrolling through my actual website. It was acting really weird. I mean, Deadpool 2 is now uh, getting a rewrite, or it's in the hands of Drew Goddard, but nobody's freaking out about that. If that was Batman, they'd be like, oh my god, the script sucks, they had to get Drew Goddard. Shut the fuck up. Uh, it's just dumb. I don't. I just don't get it sometimes, why the DCU always get the fucking shit. You know, just enjoy it. You know, it's like... I, when people like hate the DCEU so much, it's like they cringe almost when you talk about it. And I'm like, how? Okay, so maybe you didn't like the overall story and stuff like that, but how do you not like certain aspects in that movie that are pulled straight out of the fucking comic books? Okay, Bruce Wayne looking at the Robin suit with with Joker spray painting, ha ha, jokes on you, Batman. When you know in the books that Jason Todd got beat the shit out of by fucking Joker and left for dead. I mean, that's straight out of the books. He puts on the armored bat suit to fight Superman. That's straight out of Dark Knight Returns. There's so many things that are straight out of the books. How do you not enjoy that? Wonder Woman, the first time we've seen her on the big screen, and the way she saves Batman's ass, that in that entrance, that is the best entrance any superhero movie has ever produced. Anything Marvel's ever fucking produced. And I'm not trying to be biased here. I'm just saying. The way that she jumps in and saves Batman's ass with her fucking... Her arms crossed. And that music. That is the best entrance a superhero's ever had in a movie. How do you not love that? You can't fully shit on the movie. Even Suicide Squad's got some shit. You know, David Ayer did some fucking Alex Ross shit. He put some of that in there for us. The plot sucked. Yes, I get that. The plot fucking sucked. You could tell he did write that in six weeks. Or Warner Brothers said, oh, just, uh, just do this. Yes, the plot sucked ass in Suicide Squad. And a lot of people griping too. I, okay, that was another thing about the Oscars last night. When Suicide Squad won for uh, Best Makeup. God damn it. I had like nonstop. You got the fanboys that would not shut up about the win. Oh, yeah, man, fucking Academy Award winning Suicide Squad. That's right. Marvel doesn't have shit. And then you have the opposite, the people who hated the movie, who couldn't believe that it won Best Makeup. And I'm just going, it's makeup. It's fucking makeup, which it had a great deal of makeup in it. Hair and makeup was on par. Fucking makeup artists are not filmmakers, guys. Shut up. I, I mean, it was like nonstop. I was more annoyed by the haters than the, the fucking fanboys, you know? I was like, I was like, how, okay, I get it. And I didn't think it was going to win. I thought Star Trek was going to win because there was a lot of good makeup in there too. But hey, whatever. It's whatever. You know, you do what you got to do. They picked that one. Get over it. It's for makeup. Eddie Murphy's movie, Norbit, got nominated for best makeup. And that movie was dog shit. Makeup artists are not filmmakers. They don't give a fuck how bad the film is. They're still going to do a top-notch job on makeup. So get over it. I mean, it was it was so fu- it was annoying. Even one of the people that I converse with a lot on Twitter, like he would not stop and I was all, "Dude, get over it. Move on. The award was over an hour ago." It just was I just couldn't believe it. Best makeup. Uh, that's fine. The Croc makeup was absolutely astounding. Joker makeup was good. Harley makeup was good. All the makeup was good. Okay? Just get over it. Anyways, guys. All right. I think I've reached my limit here. I think it's time to call it quits on the Film Junkie Podcast. The podcast. But I appreciate you guys listening, man. Oh, shit. Hold on. Not yet. I got to answer some of your questions here. Hold on. You guys ask some questions. All right. Let's see here. The Blue Knight 94 RH. Would you like would you like to win a contest for a date with the lovely Gal Gadot or Gadot, whatever it is? Who the fuck wouldn't? Jesus Christ. That woman is gorgeous. It would look funny cuz she's probably really really tall. <laughs> I don't know. Um I would be yeah, I definitely would. Jeez. That would be pretty amazing i would uh i would ask her if my chin is better than ben affleck's which she would probably uh say now uh joey f misfit says what villain would you go with 
for Nightwing. Kind of hoping for Riddler or Red Hood. Red Hood would be interesting. Um, you know what? I honestly thought maybe Black Mask would have been good for that, but it's not. I don't know. Would they use a, a Batman villain for that? I really hope Babs is in there. Batgirl, she better be in there. I don't know if they'll put Starfire in there. I don't know if saw that. Ah, uh, that's more... No, they shouldn't put her in there. Uh, yeah, you know what? I mean, Dick is smart. So Riddler would actually be uh, not a bad choice. But, I mean, Bruce is obviously really, really smart. But see, the thing is about the Nightwing movie, this just tells me that Nightwing's going to be in the Batman movie. I mean, who knows which one's going to come out first. But... It just just makes me think that if they if, if Batman comes out first, Nightwing's gonna be in it for sure. So it might set up. Who knows? Uh, Sam Heiss said, "Would Dave be nominated? Win for an original film or non-original at the Oscars? <laughs> Probably more non-original. I don't know. I don't know how to be original. Even though I've written some screenplays and uh, I do have a novel too that's not finished yet. Ugh. Do you think that?" HOD of these scooper pooper are running out of news so they just invent one. Yeah. I sometimes think that because that Green Lantern shit that I haven't posted yet, which I'll post probably you know, around the time this is posted. There was like a rumor that Green Lantern is going to be in Justice League that came out in November and then all of a sudden it's coming around again. It's like, are we recycling? What's going on? But somebody actually said, well, it actually might be this Green Lantern. So who knows? But yeah, I think sometimes uh, Mr. Uh, I'm calling him Scoopy Pants now is uh, sometimes I think he just uses logic to, and claims he has a scoop and he just knows like, oh, this makes sense. So I'm going to say it's a scoop. I sometimes think that like not necessarily that he's making it up. And even like uh, uh, when it came to the uh, the Logan shit, when they thought that uh, Deadpool was going to be in the post credit scene. I think that he heard something and, and just couldn't hold his wand. And he had to put it out there. And then he got called out by James Mangold, the fucking director. I fucking love that. I love that. I love it when directors call out. He's been called out by James Mangold and James Gunn. <laughs> and I think another director too. And it's just like, you know what? For a while there, I wanted to be like, oh man, I wish I could be like one of these scooping guys, get the exclusive and shit like that. I'm like, no, now I don't want to. Like I, I did before. I was all about like leaks and spoilers and shit like that. I'm not anymore. I honestly don't like it anymore. I wanna, I wanna, I'd rather just give my opinions about things, and I'd rather save spoilers and leaks for the fucking movie. I honestly do, especially when these directors work really hard on these movies, and they got some fucking asshole who starts digging around, finds out something, and puts it all out there, and then all these other blogs just start fucking, you know, circulating around, and then they just get pissed off. And that's why James Mangold said, yeah, fuck this guy. Called him out. Made him look like an asshole. And sometimes, yeah, I think they do kind of make up some shit. I don't know. Who knows, man. Anyways, well, that was pretty much it. I probably should look on my YouTube, but I, eh, I've already been running. It's almost, it's over 45 minutes. But uh, feel free to leave some questions down below on this one. Uh, I do have it streaming on SoundCloud. I have a SoundCloud account, so if you want to just stream it like that, as opposed to putting on a YouTube video, it's a lot better. It is. It is. So you can actually just stream it without having anything on. That's right. You betcha. But uh, I appreciate you guys listening, man. Uh, uh, I really enjoy doing this. Get a lot of shit out, you know, a lot of angst, a lot of stuff. Just, I mean, to me, it's just like me talking to myself pretty much. But uh, I enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Feel free to leave some questions. L leave a question for me whenever, man. Ask anything. Could be movie related. It could be personal. Not too personal. I'll still answer. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but yeah, do it, man. So appreciate you guys listening. And uh, yeah, this has been Film Junket Podcast number three. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.